Hi, and welcome to Journey Forward with Jory Rose, where you will gain insights, tools, and inspiration to get unstuck and live your best life. Jory is a licensed marriage and family therapist with a passion for helping people cultivate awareness and authenticity so they can show up fully in all aspects of their life. And now, here's Jory. Hey everyone, it's Jory Rose. Welcome back to this week's episode of Journey Forward with Jory Rose. So if you've been listening to recent episodes, you know that since the beginning of October, and as I've been saying through the end of December, I'm having each episode be like a little mini masterclass in how to cultivate a mindfulness practice. I know that for so many of us, 2020 has brought so much challenge, both in external circumstances and also our internal reactions and struggles to all that has been going on in the world. And since the beginning of COVID, I have said now more than ever is a perfect time to cultivate a mindfulness practice. Because I really feel that since COVID began, this really is the universe asking all of us, okay, you guys, are you paying attention? Are you being aware? It's time to slow down. It's time to get really intentional in how you live your lives. And you can't make any of those changes unless you become more aware of what's arising and be able to have the ability to enact an intention that is in alignment with who you want to be and how you want to be living your life. Because I know so many people are just feeling stuck. They're feeling overwhelmed. They're feeling anxious. They're feeling stressed. They're feeling sad. They're angry. They're depressed. There's so much going on in our world that is easily preventing us from feeling our lives are flowing with ease right now. And yet, I do believe that with practice, we have an ability to be able to be at ease, to be at peace and have greater calm and even happiness despite any external circumstance. Because it truly is a matter of how are we responding, not reacting in each moment. How am I taking things personally versus accepting whatever is arising with deeper compassion or self-compassion or radical acceptance? How how am I coming into equanimity, this idea of being able to not instantly have to judge my internal or external experience when another person instantly is good or bad, positive or negative, to see things as they are be able to say it just is what it is and actually mean it rather than say it in a way that's dismissive or in a way that's passive aggressive with a flippant whatever, which is one of my trigger words I hate, because it's a way of saying I care, but I'm not actually going to face it or I'm not actually going to say what I'm really feeling And so, you know, whatever is arising in your life, I really believe mindfulness is here as a tool that we can all be practicing to give us greater peace, greater calm, greater contentment, regardless of whatever the world's big life issues are, like, you know, pandemics and elections and climate change and all of the things that are arising right now, or whether they're internal experiences, maybe things you've been struggling with, depression, anxiety, stress, or maybe being in a relationship that's no longer serving you or at a job that you're not happy or fulfilled in. To me, these tools help us with all of it. And there's no magic being here. It literally is a practice to practice over and over and over again. It's never a one and done. You know, I never want you to feel like because you've gone through a certain tool of meditation or maybe you've, you know, strengthened an ability for effective communication. Now you're just like done with that and you can move on to the next task. That's not the way it works. So mindfulness is a tool that we cultivate over and over and over again. And the more that we do so, the better we get at it, meaning the more second nature it becomes. Because each and every time you are practicing any of the tools that I've talked about so far, and I'll recap them in a bit, because I really do want you to feel that 
you know, these last three months of 2020 and these little mini master classes that I'm giving, I do want you to see the progression of what I am building upon. And I do want you to see how when you can build the foundation and what we can then build on top of that. And you can't just jump to the silver lining. You can't jump or run to the finish line. You got to do the hard work to get there. So to recap some of the things that we've talked about so far is this idea of wellness. That to me, you know, to have a, our overall wellness is an ability to find balance and contentment and peace and ease regardless of what's arising, like I mentioned a few moments ago. To have the resilience or the adaptability that we're not letting our internal and external barometer be based on what's arising outside of us, but truly what we're able to cultivate from within. Of course, I went through a total of 13 different myths of meditation. Hopefully you were able to identify with some of those and see most importantly, how to push past the ones that may have otherwise been holding you back. I've talked about that mindfulness is not something to add to your to-do list, but mindfulness truly is a way of being. And of course, my favorite title, Awareness Sex, and why it can be just so hard to be aware and to help make sense of why that we often stay unaware because, you know, in some level, ignorance really is bliss. It doesn't really serve us long term, but I do understand how so many people would rather stay ignorant and unaware than face the hard shit they're facing. So, you know, what do I want to talk about today is another foundation of what I see um, as a real baseline of cultivating a mindfulness practice is understanding how mindfulness shows up with body awareness. And there's a couple of different ways that this comes into, into practice. And I'm going to be covering four different areas, um, areas such as mindful movement, understanding the sensations in our body, having our body be a tool of intuition and deeper knowledge and deeper wisdom, and then finishing up talking about a mind-body connection. So why does this even matter, talking about mindfulness as it relates to our body? Well, I think for so many of us, and especially here in our in, in Western culture, is we are really socialized and we are really raised to stay stuck in our heads. You know, we are taught that if it's logical, if it's rational, then it must be true. And we tend to overanalyze just about everything. We tend to overthink things. We tend to believe our thoughts as our truth, when in reality, they are simply thoughts. And when we get stuck in this habit of overanalyzing and over-rationalizing, often what we are doing is we are cutting ourselves off from the neck down to be able to tune into and even, dare I say, trust the messages our body is telling us. So I'd like for you to think for a second, have you ever come to a turning point in your life in which you had to make a really big decision? Just consider what is the process through which you go through in order to make a really big decision? Now, when I was growing up, my mom used to tell me two different ways to help make decisions. One was this very heady, logical way, which was basically what she called, you know, doing a Ben Franklin, which was making the pro and con list. The pro and con list generally is based on our thoughts. It's based on those things that are rational or logical or reasonable. But then she also would tell me that one of the ways to make decision is to imagine trying it on like it's a sweater. And I used to think this was the strangest description. And she would say to me, when you make a decision, you imagine wrapping that decision around you. Does it feel like wool in which you're all itchy and you're like all feeling uncomfortable and it's just, it's not very warm or cozy as you wrap yourself around this decision? Is it making you wanting to take it off? Is it making you irritable? Is it making you cranky? Or does the decision that you wrap around yourself feel like silk or like cashmere, where it just feels so smooth against your skin and you just want to cozy up to it and wrap yourself around it? 
with comfort and ease, and it just flows beautifully. So, you know, I was raised with this two different mindsets. And my guess is that the majority of us are actually not taught the experiential side of that decision-making process. And I now know that what my mom was describing was when she said, you know, wrap the decision around you and see how it feels. That was a way of teaching me to get into my body and connect with the sensations internally around how I felt about something. And maybe it's true that we need both parts. Maybe we need to do our Ben Franklin and do our pro-con list and be able to look at things objectively. But I don't want to discount the ability of tuning into our body as an equal, if not greater source of our deeper wisdom and intuition. So just reflect about that as you go through your day. Are you staying stuck in your head? Are you staying stuck in your thoughts? Are you staying stuck in your beliefs? How often are you tuning into your body as a source of valuable information? Now, no judgment, but my guess is that the majority of us do stay stuck in our head, partly because we over attach meaning to logic and rationality. It's tangible. It's justifiable. So therefore, it must be true. Well, our body and our emotions and our intuition and the sensations that we feel are also equally true. And I might venture to even say more true than the rationalizations because I don't know about you, but I have had to make some pretty big decisions in my life. If I were to do the Ben Franklin on paper and I were to write out my pro-con list, everything pointed the logic and reason of sticking with the status quo to say this was the right choice. But everything in my body felt the opposite. Well, I lived the majority of my life believing the logical, rational response. And again, I'm not denying logic and reason. We need it and it's valuable. And it's not the only answer. But when I learned to practice mindfulness and I learned to slow down and pay attention and honor and give space for the messages my body was telling me, that became the bigger factor in my decision making because I had situations, really big situations in which my body did not align with my head. And having had been in a pattern majority, the majority of my life of aligning with my head and wake up one day saying, like, I feel out of alignment. Something is off. Something's not right. And it was not until I learned to slow down, tune into my body, connect with my breath, get out of the thoughts, and deeply listen to my body, that that is where my deeper wisdom resided. That is where my answers that were there all along, that I often was too afraid to see or too anxious to accept or too sad or too scared of what that would mean. But when I've learned to follow that intuition, to trust the messages of my body, I, it never steered me the wrong way. So that's some insight into possibly why it's important to be able to connect with the body. But I wanna go through, like I've been saying, little master classes in, in learning mindfulness. What are some different areas that this body awareness shows up? So one of the first ones I like to talk about is mindful movement. You know, so often we are going through our day without paying attention to what we're doing. We're disconnected. We're going through the motions. We're on autopilot. But I do invite you to connect with your body the next time that you're doing movement. So, you know, back in the good old days pre-COVID when we'd go to the gym, how many of you would get on the treadmill or the elliptical machine and they often these days all have TVs or you're tuning into your, your music <clears throat> and you tune into these external things as a way of disconnecting from what you're doing. You are no longer 
in the sensation of moving your body. You're in the sensation or the sound of the music or what you're watching on TV as a form of distraction. There's nothing wrong with that. But I do want to invite you into the movement of your body as a way of connecting with yourself. And, you know, one of the areas that this comes up in the foundation of mindfulness, as we know, is the foundation of a meditation practice, is that there is walking meditation, which is equally as valid as far as meditation goes as a sitting meditation. And in fact, you know, any traditional retreat that I've gone on, any traditional Buddhist meditation retreat that I've attended, which has been quite a few, there is an equal number of sitting meditations as there are walking meditations. And the intention with a walking meditation is put your mind's awareness into the movement as the focal point of attention. So if you were doing a sitting meditation, you'd be sitting and breathing, and that breath would be the focal point of attention, or maybe you'd have sounds be the focal point of attention, or maybe even a sensation in your body. But when you're doing a walking meditation, is the sensation of your feet kissing the ground, heel to toe, walking ever so slowly with great awareness and intention, and putting all of your attention into each step. And when we put our attention into the sensation and the movement, then we are therefore out of our head and out of distraction. So, you know, in a in a setting in which there's 150 people doing a mindful walking meditation, it kind of looks like Land of the Living Zombies. So I'm not suggesting you have to go do that, but I am suggesting that you slow down and move your body intentionally. And just notice what happens. And, you know, I've often been guided in exercise classes or um, like a Pilates or a yoga class in connecting, putting your mind into the muscle. And when we can connect deeper with it, I do believe we get a, a more, what's the word I want to say, not just a deep experience, but I think we become more deeply connected into the power and the strength of our body. We become more deeply connected into all the things that we've overcome. We become more deeply connected into the muscles in which we can build greater strength of awareness of not just our fitness, that's not what this is only about by any means, but just our own inner strength, because we so often are moving without awareness. So I, I invite you to practice that, you know, anytime you're out taking a walk, just take a few moments in which you're literally putting your mind's attention into each step and just use it as an opportunity to be more present, to be more aware. Okay, so moving on to different areas of how mindfulness shows up in our bodies is this idea of sensations. And I could talk about sensations in so many different ways. And we'll, you know, I'll, I'll talk some more about it in some future episodes in how it gets related into what I call the cycle of reactivity. But sensations are a fascinating thing because they happen all the time and they provide us so much information because we get a physiological response, thoughts, we get a physiological response to emotions. We get, therefore, a physiological response to stress, to anxiety, to overwhelm, to fear, to depression, to sadness. And how things are showing up in our bodies can be really interesting information if we choose to pay attention to it. But we tend to dismiss it and to want to push it aside or just to fix it without using it as insight. So let me give some examples of this. Um, oftentimes, our emotional challenges show up as somatic complaints, headaches, stomach aches, back pain, tension in the shoulders. And we tend to quickly want to just push away the pain, up some Advil, and have it go away. What would happen if you got curious about the stomach ache, curious about the headache, curious about the back pain? To ask yourself, I'm, I'm really wondering what's showing up in my body right now and what I can do besides just popping some pain meds. Be able to connect with it 
and be able to possibly be even to relieve the, the pain that's in showing up in my body. Because part of what happens is we identify sensation as pain. And what would happen if we just simply identified it as sensation? We're so quick to label and to judge, and therefore try to fix and to solve without getting curious. So differentiating between pain and sensation, getting curious, what emotions have I pushed down that are now showing up in different somatic ways? Take some time and some insight to be able to look into that, but with greater awareness of our bodies, we have a greater ability to understand what's arising. You know, it's interesting. After I had my second daughter, I while I was right in um, recovery after having a C-section, I experienced a really, really high spike in my blood pressure. The doctors for a couple of days didn't know what was going on, but it was kind of at almost, you know, potentially stroke levels. My blood pressure shot up to 220 over 110. And I, I immediately had to get blood pressure medication um, in, injected into my IV because I, I said to the nurse, I, I literally thought my head was going to explode. I have never experienced a headache so bad, which it just felt like this surge, like this huge tidal wave of just blood rushing to my head. And it was really scary. And as a result, I ended up having postpartum preeclampsia, which is, so, you know, interestingly enough, blood pressure issues after giving birth, not usually what happens during, you know, in pregnancy. But I had to be on blood pressure medication for three months. And this might have been one of the very first times that I was really in deepened heightness of an awareness of just how much my emotional experience, my emotional experiences caused my blood pressure to increase. Because my blood pressure was so out of whack. Any surge of heart rate or headaches was tied to an emotional experience. And I remember at the time there was a challenge I was having with a dear friend of mine and I had seen her name pop up on my phone. As soon as I saw the name pop up, I felt this surge of a headache. And again, had I not been so in tune to my body, I would have thought, oh, I have a headache right now. Let me just go take some Avil and the headache will go away. Because I was in such awareness of this mind-body connection and what was tied to my blood pressure, I knew that the direct connection was, I saw her name up on the phone. It brought me anxiety. It brought me a little bit of fear and uncertainty. And as a result, I was feeling now anxious and I felt as ungrounded instantly. And the surge of blood pressure was causing this headache. But there was an emotional component that had I not been that heightened in my awareness would have just otherwise dismissed. So just noticing, when are we labeling things as pain? When are we labeling them as just sensation? Where are we getting curious about what's showing up in our bodies? Another area that we can use mindfulness of our bodies is like I was saying in the beginning of paying attention to our intuition. How are we making decisions? What are the messages our body is telling us? And how much honor are we giving to those messages? You know, I think one of the best things, especially in raising kids, that we can do is guide them to trust in their intuition. That if something doesn't feel right, likely isn't right. We tend to dismiss that through logic. And I've had a, a plenty of experiences where I've been working with clients. Um, let's say, for example, if the parents are about to go through a divorce, but they're not quite ready to share that information with their kids. And I'm thinking of an example in which a teenage girl came to her mom one day and said, hey, mom, what's going on with you and dad? I'm just feeling like things are off. Well, in this particular case, the parents were already in the process of a divorce and were already sleeping in separate rooms. They hadn't told their kids anything. And the mom was not yet ready to tell the daughter what was going on because it wasn't fitting into the time frame they had planned for this. So what she did was she said to her daughter, who was, I think, 14 or 15 at the time, oh, honey, don't worry. Everything is okay. You know, it, we're just sleeping in separate rooms because daddy's work schedule and he needs more sleep. And while I have compassion for how that was the response, I also advise this parent 
that she just taught her teenage daughter to dismiss what her body was telling her when in fact what her body was telling her was actually accurate. And I would so much rather face the pain of the reality than teach my child to dismiss their own intuition, dismiss the messages their body was telling them, because those messages can be really informative in really powerful moments of our lives and how to make decisions. And if we are dismissing those messages our body is telling us in favor of logic and reason, we're missing an opportunity to connect with some really deep wisdom. So another area that uh, body awareness shows up in a mindfulness practice is the mind-body connection, whether it's um, in our somatic you know, complaints or somatic issues, stomach aches, headaches, back aches, as the such as I mentioned a few moments ago. But, you know, I, and I'll be honest, I'm not really, really well versed in it, but I do get really curious whenever my clients are experiencing different physical pain, I get really curious about the chakras and the energy centers that are showing up in their physical pain. And if you look to the different energy centers as sources of information, and when we are not experiencing flow in a particular area, we get stuck. And when we get stuck, energy has to go somewhere. And, you know, so if you're, for example, um, you know, if you're losing your voice or having difficulty even just swallowing or getting choked up on your words, and, you know, this can come in the form of sore throats or um, losing your voice, like I said, you know, the mind-body connection is related to the energy centers might suggest that maybe you are not able to speak your truth in these moments. And that's why these issues keep arising. So it's, it's something I hold space for. It's something I get really curious about. I'm not going to attach an over deep meaning to it in a way that that becomes, you know, the only answer. It is something that I can begin to get curious about. Um, so not just the energy centers and the chakras as how it shows up in our physical manifestation, but I also get really curious in the mind-body connection when it comes to mindset. And I'm going to dedicate a whole episode to mindset coming up. But, you know, there has been such amazing studies that show just how powerful our mindset is and that our mindset can actually affect our health on a cellular level. So if you've ever discounted the power of your mindset and how it shows up in our physical body, well, then I'm going to share some really great insights with you guys around um, the, the, the real impact that our mind has on our physical body. So, you know, these are lots of different ways and different areas that body awareness is related to mindfulness. And again, if we're talking that mindfulness is the ability to have greater awareness, greater attention, and greater intention. And as again, I'll remind you that that's awareness of what's arising, your thoughts, your emotions, your sensations, your distractions, it, paying attention to your typical habits, patterns, or mindsets in relation to whatever's arising, and then knowing why you're doing what you're doing, having greater intention to live your life on purpose, right? So when we can bring more mindfulness into all these different aspects of our body, then we are able to show up in a more authentic way. We are able to show up in a wholehearted experience where we are not giving more credit or allegiance to just our thoughts or just, you know, what's rational or logical, and that when we practice slowing down, when we practice paying attention and being aware of what's arising and giving it space to exist without judging what's here, but coming back into that curiosity, coming back into that compassion to what's arising, we gain such greater and deeper insights into ourselves. And when we can do so, we have that ability for that emotional regulation or that balance or that wellness that I was talking about at the beginning. Because again, I don't want you just to know the what mindfulness is or how to practice. I really want you to understand why it matters and what is the implication of continuing to practice. And the more you practice this awareness, the greater ability you have 
at being resilient and adaptable and allowing whatever's arising to exist without judgment, without throwing it off your center, without getting ungrounded, without only being able to be happy when the perfect circumstances arise, because that's never going to happen. Mindfulness really does give us that ability to be able to create greater, happier peace and calm, no matter what is arising. So hopefully you found this information helpful. I do invite you, if this episode spoke to you, please give it a rating and review so we can have more people get access to Journey Forward so they can create the long-term lasting change that they are seeking. And please check out the show notes. Come join over my Facebook group. Each month, I'm going to be doing a different challenge. And at the end of each month, over the last week of the month, I'm just today finishing up a five-day meditation challenge. And I'll be giving away one of my beautiful Journey Forward journals, which a little bit of a teaser. November just might be the month that that journal might come in handy. So please come join the Facebook group so you can get direct access to me and all my daily tips and tools of cultivating and integrating mindfulness into your life. And as I've been saying, now between the end of 2020, each episode each week is going to be a little different mini masterclass on different aspects of mindfulness. And all of this is for a big announcement and launch that I'm bringing to you in January, in which I am going to be launching a new membership, a monthly membership for you to work with me directly on how to integrate and cultivate mindfulness in all aspects of your life. So stay tuned for more information. Get excited because this is going to be an amazing opportunity to be able to work directly with me in very tangible, hands-on ways of how to create the long-term lasting change that you are most needing to create in whatever that is in your life. So check out the show notes, stay tuned, and get really curious how to be more aware of what's arising in your body and not dismiss any of those sensations, not to get distracted during your exercise, get connected into your body, and create the space for really trusting and honoring the deeper wisdom, the deeper intuition of whatsoever arising. Thanks, you guys, so much for tuning in. I'm so grateful that you're part of the Journey Forward community. And I look forward to having you guys tune in on the next episode in which we're going to be talking about mindfulness of our thoughts. Super powerful practice to get more aware of. So stay tuned and I wish you all to be well. To continue your journey forward, find Jory Rose on Facebook and Instagram to become part of her growing community. You can also gain access to her meditations, books, online classes, or to sign up for an upcoming retreat, visit her at joryrose.com. That's J-O-R-E-E-R-O-S-E dot com.